Many years had gone since King Saul had gloriously defeated Nahas, son of King Ammon, named the Ammonite. Two men on camel traveled through the desert under a burning sun. One of the two men was Samuel, who had left Gilgal where he lived to reach Ramet, his new destination. We've been traveling for three months. Aren't you tired, Samuel? It doesn't matter if I'm tired. I have to go where Jehovah sends me to tell everybody about him. Samuel, how do you know where God wants to send you? Very simple, I listen. To his voice. Do you know why everybody fears you? Because all men fear you because they always say you always speak with Jehovah. They don't have to fear me. Only Jehovah must be feared. I am merely his servant. Saul was only 30 years old when he became king, and almost 20 years had gone since he began to reign and fight in the name of Jehovah. But Jehovah wasn't pleased with King Saul because he closed his heart to the Lord's word. Saul had forgotten that Jehovah alone was the source of his strength. Samuel, Samuel. Lord, your servant is here. You know that I already judged Saul, so why are you still defending him? Lord, oh my Lord, because you chose him and your people don't have another king. Lord, tell me what to do and I'll obey you. You are my Lord, my only God. Samuel, I know that you are faithful to me. Safioth, it has been a very long and hard journey, but finally here we are. Blessed be the name of the Almighty who sent you among us. Accept this bread and salt, Samuel. Thank you, Safioth. May the name of the Almighty always be blessed. The wars fought by the people of Israel followed so hard on each other's heels that they seemed to have been constant. These wars weakened the Israeli people so much that nobody believed there would ever be peace and the serenity they longed for. Now, King Saul had to defend Israeli lands from a new Philistine threat. To help save their lands, he ordered three Israeli messengers to reach Ramah, where the righteous Samuel had settled down. The three messengers had to convince the wise prophet to go back to the city of Gilgal before the battle so that he could ask Jehovah's help for the Hebrew people. Only Samuel could do this. He asks me to make a trip once more. Couldn't he come to me here in Ramah? If he left the city of Gilgal to come to you, many would think that he's trying to escape. The people and even Jonathan, his son, they would all be afraid and many would run away. He's asking you to go to him <gasps> because he also fears the strength of the enemy. And he knows that only you, Samuel, can implore Jehovah to fight with us against the Philistines and save our lives as you have done before. Only now King Saul remembers his God just because he is afraid. The Philistines are too many. They swore to kill every Israeli they meet on their way and to tear the king to pieces. This is not Jehovah's will. Israel mustn't perish. Therefore, I'll go to Gilgal, tell the king to prepare the altar for the burnt sacrifice. I'll go to beg Jehovah to forgive him. Tell him to wait for me. Within seven days, I'll be there. The three messengers went back to Gilgal and told King Saul the term of seven days set by the wise Samuel. In the meantime, the Philistine soldiers had already camped at Mikmas, eastern Belavane, and were getting ready for battle. Their army was composed of 30,000 carts, 6,000 knights, weapons, and a swathe of other fighters. The Philistine people were convinced of victory, and before the day set for battle, they placed their trust in Dagon, their invisible god. 
Finally, on the seventh day, King Saul arrived. Self-confidently, he gathered his courtiers, the priests and people in the place where they would meet the prophet Samuel. He lit the fire of purification, he chose an animal to offer, and he began to wait. Why don't we attack? We've been waiting for seven days. Maybe Jehovah is no longer with us. King Saul is afraid. He's waiting for sacrifices from Samuel to offer Jehovah before we attack. It's already been seven days. He promised he would come. And I have waited for seven days. You have all seen that I've waited for seven days, but now I have to fight. The enemy and many of our men think that the demon of fear possess me. Before the battle, I will offer a sacrifice to Jehovah myself. You know well you can't do that, my lord. I am the king and I can do it. Cover me with my mantle. And King Saul did what he should never have done. He offered the sacrifices of gratitude to Jehovah, taking Samuel the wise prophet's place. By doing so, he committed serious sacrilege. May Jehovah be blessed! What have you done? What have you done? Sacrilege! Sacrilege! Samuel! What have you done? I waited for you, but the people started to doubt their king's strength and they were abandoning me. So I decided that there wasn't much time and that we had to attack oh. the Philistines. You didn't come back in spite of your promises to be here within seven days. So I thought you that You acted I... foolishly and you didn't obey the Lord's command. Had you obeyed him, you would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Now, even if you won this battle because of your disobedience, your kingdom won't last long. The Lord is already looking for a man after his heart and he oh. will appoint him ruler over his people. During his 42-year reign, Saul defeated countless enemies that had attempted to invade his lands and people. The battles he led always ended with his victory. Forward in the name of the great dragon! Forward! Destroy the Hebrews! After every victory, King Saul took abundant spoils and became very rich. He became the biggest owner of livestock in history because he gathered an enormous quantity of animals. Goats, lambs, calves, cows, donkeys and camels. And all these animals had been taken from the enemies he had defeated. Samuel, the prophet, loved Saul very much. And seeing that he no longer listened to the Lord's words, Samuel once again set out through the desert to reach Gilgal. He wanted to convince Saul to realize his own mistakes and to go back to his faith in Jehovah before it was too late. Welcome, wise Samuel. Welcome among us. You fought and you won your battles, but you don't listen to the Lord's voice. Why are you so attached to earthly spoils? But I defended my people and I obeyed the Lord, destroying the Amicalites. I, I allocated the choices of beasts to the Lord's altar to be offered as sacrifices. I don't think I did wrong behaving this way. Do you think Jehovah delights in this? Obedience is the best sacrifice and attention is worthier than the fat of rams. Because you rejected the word of the <gasps> Lord, he rejected you as king. Ugh. The Lord rent the kingdom of Israel from you and he will give it to someone better oh, than you. No, no, why Samuel, no. The Lord cannot want this, no, no, no. And your tardy repentance won't be able to stop him. Uh. 
I implore you for the sake of Saul, the king of your people who sinned but asks your forgiveness, have pity on him and forgive him his sins. Samuel, Samuel, listen to me. King Saul sinned against me and you know that. And I can't forgive him. Lord, I have waited for you to forgive him. How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I rejected him from reigning over Israel? I've already chosen another king to reign in his place. Lord, do you mean to leave Israel without a king? No. Fill your horn with oil and go to the priest Josiah the Bethlehemite, for I provided me a king among his sons. Once again, Samuel the prophet, as the Lord ordered, mounted his camel and set out towards the place where Zai the Bethlehemite lived to announce to him the good news. You've a wonderful family. Sons are like arrows in the quiver of their father. He shoots them from his ark far in life to continue his strain and of honoring him. Are these your sons? No, one of them is missing, the youngest one. Now he's grazing the flock. Send for him. Oh. Call him. Here he is. He's back right now. <coughs> mother, mother, I'm here. Oh. Oh, blessed be Jehovah's name always. Oh. Oh. The boy approached Samuel, who looked at him closely and waited for the Lord to send a sign of consent about the choice of this new king of Israel. Samuel put his hand on the boy's head and waited. This is the one I choose. The Lord chose you, David. Bend your head and worship. In the name of Jehovah, I anoint you king over your people. And through the hand of Samuel the prophet, the Lord elected David, Jesai the Bethlehemite's son, new king of Israel. In the meantime, King Saul continued with life as normal because he had no idea what was happening and that his reign had come to an end. That is a terrible musician. Send him away before I kill him and find another one immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The king orders you to stop playing and leave here immediately. Oh. Go on. Oh. Go on. <laughs> the Hebrews and the Philistines had both camped at Ephes Damin in the mountains, facing each other, but they were separated by a river that ran through the valley. The Hebrews will move down from the hill to the valley, and when they get there, we'll beat them. <laughs> and they haven't seen Goliath yet. When they see him, they will be terrorized and will flee like hares. Yes, they'll run like hares. Finally, we'll have King Saul on his knees. When he's captured, I want to drag him along like a trophy throughout my entire reign. Emerging from the crowd, there came the man the Philistine king and his courtier had been talking about. Goliath, the giant from Gat. A champion warrior, three meters tall, with heavy armor of bronze scales and a bronze helm. Goliath, Goliath, what are you going to do with King Saul? Will you kill him or not? No, I won't kill him. I will take him and tie him with a leather rope and put him to guard my house with my dog. <laughs> Look, here are the Hebrews. From King Saul's tent drifted the harmonious sitara sound and the sweet voice of an adolescent. It was the voice of David, youngest son of Esai the Bethlehemite, who had taken the place of the previous singer. Enraptured, King Saul was listening to the melody whilst in the meantime. Who watches over us from the sky and protects us 
Israelis listen! Choose among you your champion! I want to I will not go! Oh, he's too big! Choose someone who will come down alone to fight me! Saul, where are you? Come and face me! He threatened us! He's a giant, my king! He's three meters high! And what do my people say? What do they say about me? Father, people say you will be fighting Goliath and that you will beat him. But if he is three meters tall, how can I beat him? How? It's impossible to beat him. You? Why did you stop playing? Continue! So that I don't disturb you, sir, while you're thinking. I didn't want I to... I think that here we need someone who knows how to use the sword, boy. Mm. Mm -hmm. I should go and fight him. Maybe I could defeat him, but maybe I could also be defeated, and then what would become of my dignity as king? Who could become king? Mm. 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 Meanwhile, on the other side of the river, surrounded by Philistines, the swaggering Goliath was looking forward to receiving an answer from the Hebrews. He knew the Hebrews were all too frightened to fight him. Well, did you decide? Who will fight against me? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Go away! Get out of here! Goliath challenged the Hebrews for 40 days. The courtiers worried about King Saul, who had become visibly anxious, unable to find a solution to this enormous problem. They had no advice to give him. Having looked in vain for a Hebrew that would accept the challenge, King Saul reluctantly decided he would have to fight Goliath himself. But then, an unexpected offer appeared. Hmm? Your Majesty, I will go and face the giant. I'm not afraid of him. <gasps> You? But you can't do this! But I've already killed a lion that was going to attack my sheep. You? I don't believe it. You're too small, and the Philistine weighs more than five oxen. You are as light as one bird. Let me try, my king. You won't regret it, because Jehovah is with me. I kiss the robe of the righteous Samuel. When I was a shepherd, the Lord saved me from the claws of a lion and the talons of a bear, and I killed both with my own hands. I am sure that I can even beat the giant Goliath. Incredible! Mm. Jehovah is always with me, sir, but if someone else wants to fight the giant himself, <gasps> I'll leave the huh? honor of victory. Oh. Huh? Tell me, my lord, is there anyone else? No, neither here nor outside. Nobody wants to fight Goliath. Nobody. All fear him, and no one wants to accept the challenge. No one. Meantime, in the Philistines' camp, Goliath and the Philistines were celebrating a victory they felt was close at hand. <laughs> After listening to David's convincing reasoning and seeing his determination to face Goliath, Saul decided to accept him as the Hebrews' challenging champion, even though he was unsure of success. He offered David his own armor to wear. Thank you, Your Majesty, but to beat the giant, I won't need all of this. David took the ill-fitting armor off and simply put his pouch back over his shoulder. He left King Saul's tent, and then he stooped to choose and pick up five smooth stones. After choosing carefully, he put them into his shepherd's pouch. Then he tested his sling. After, with his sling in his hand... That! I want. David quietly walked towards the Philistine giant Goliath, who was still celebrating his victory against the Hebrews. Oh, 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 oh,
Hey, you, uh, dancer. Oh, uh, who are you, simpleton? <laughs> I am the smallest of Eastside's children, and I will beat you. <laughs> While the Philistine soldiers split their sides with laughter, the Hebrews were worried and ashamed because they had sent a boy in their place. Come to me and I'll give you some of your flesh to the bird and some to the beasts. Then I'll cut to pieces your king who sends a boy to fight a giant. <laughs> stone, catapulted by David, struck the mighty Goliath right in the middle of his forehead, and the giant Philistine fell to the ground. Then David took the sword from Goliath's scabbard and drove it through his chest. Watching the shouting, cheering crowd, Saul instinctively knew that his reign was over and that a new one had begun. Hey! Ah!